I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll show you how to shoot and edit deep infrared images with your existing unconverted DSLR or mirrorless camera. I'll cover the equipment you need, most of which you already have, the techniques to use, and the challenges you'll face. Deep infrared means you're using a filter with a 720 nanometer or greater cutoff, typically 800 nanometers or higher. With a converted camera, a deep infrared filter will only capture infrared light since the hot mirror has been removed and visible light is blocked. These images are typically processed as black and white. Your exposure time will be around 1 30th of a second. With an unconverted camera where the hot mirror is still in place, a deep infrared filter will block visible light where, while the hot mirror will block infrared. This results in a very long exposure, typically 5 to 20 minutes. Since some visible light will be captured, deep infrared shots with an unconverted camera can be processed as color. That's what I'll cover in this video. At the end of the video, I'll address the biggest challenge with long exposures. You'll use your existing unconverted mirrorless or DSLR camera. You don't need a converted camera to shoot deep infrared, just some patience. You'll need a tripod due to the extremely long exposures. Plus, you'll need a way to trigger the shutter, such as the camera timer delay, a cable release, or a mobile phone app. You'll need an infrared filter with a cutoff above 750 nanometers. In this case, I'm using the plus w 93 which has a cutoff of 830 nanometers. The B plus W brand doesn't mean black and white, it stands for Bierman and Weber, who founded the B plus W filter manufacturing company in 1947. The extremely long exposures will allow some visible light to reach the sensor, but mostly we're capturing near infrared light above 830 nanometers. You'll need to shoot in direct sunlight. Compose your shot before adding the filter. While a 720 nanometer filter with an unconverted camera will result in shutter speeds around 5 to 30 seconds, an 830 nanometer filter will require much longer shutter speeds, around 5 to 10 minutes. This image was shot at ISO 200. Use the lowest ISO for your camera for the least amount of noise. This is critical for long exposures. Higher ISO values can reduce your exposure time, but the noise will get out of control. You can use a very high ISO for focusing after the filter is attached, but remember to set your to your base ISO before taking the shot. This image was shot at f8, which is about the highest f-stop that I could use to avoid diffraction. I probably could have used f5.6 or even f4 for this shot. The exposure time was 300 seconds or 5 minutes. The shot was underexposed by about a stop. Using f5.6 or an exposure of 10 minutes would have resulted in a better exposure. So I've opened this image in Photoshop, which, because it's a RAW file, automatically opens it in Camera Raw, and this is where I can start my edit. So the first thing that I want to do is look at a white balance. So I will grab the white balance picker, which in Photoshop is uh, clicking this eyedropper or the I key, and I will select a cloud to set my white balance. Now actually, with this particular image, I'm actually just barely able to get a white balance that is within the range without setting a custom profile. If, however, you are not able to do this, if your image caps at either 2,000 or 50,000 on this scale, you'll want to use a custom profile. So what you'll do is come up to custom profiles. I've got a couple here under favorites. These are the two profiles that come with the infrared profile pack. You can either create a custom profile using the DNG profile editor, but if you don't want to, you can also download the profile pack and grab a profile for your camera that way. So in this case, I will use the infrared temp negative 50 and hit back. Now I can come back and hit the I key to pull up the eyedropper and click on my cloud. And now I have set a white balance and you can see that the value on the temperature slider is in the middle somewhere. It doesn't matter the exact value. What's important is that it's not capped at either end at either 2000 or 50,000. You want a value in the middle with the white balance selected on some neutral value like the clouds or, or grass or something. 
So now I have a good white balance set. So let's make some other changes to this image before I leave camera raw. This image is underexposed by about a stop. So I'm just going to increase the exposure by a stop to bring it up a bit. Uh, that um, is good overall, but let's see, it kind of over extends the face of the mountain here. So what I'd like to do is I will grab a radial filter and I'm just going to come into the, this here and draw a radial filter around the face of this mountain. And what we will do is uh, we'll set an, an exposure. So I'll usually go like a third of a stop down, tweak the contrast a bit, and then maybe tweak the clarity a bit just to give a little bit more depth uh, to this space here. The next thing that I want to do is come down to this reflection in the water and I want to I want to pump up this reflection a little bit more so it's a little bit more prominent. So I'll create another radial filter and in this case uh, let me use this uh, reset to reset all the values and then I will maybe bring up the exposure just a hair increase the clarity which will create a little more definition there uh, and let's see contrast now nah, I don't want to play with the contrast zero that out so that looks pretty good maybe I'll go a little bit higher with the exposure because I really want this reflection to stand out a bit okay so I've got uh, better reflection I have a little more uh, contrast and definition in this mountain here um, what I'd like the other thing I'd like to do is diminish the impact of the bottom so I'll go up to the graduated filter and I will draw a graduated filter here along the bottom uh, move that move it up a bit right up to the bottom of the reflection here darken this down and then I really want to darken the bottom of the image so I'll reset my values and then I'll drop the exposure maybe even close to a full stop somewhere so that's good so I'll drop the exposure value so I've made some of these changes let's go back to basic uh, overall I want to just increase the contrast slightly maybe increase clarity slightly uh, and maybe just a hint of dehaze, just a hint. That creates a lot of uh, contrast, but I don't want too much. Okay, so, and maybe I will adjust the vibrance as well. A little bit more vibrance, because I want a little bit of color punch in this image. Okay, so now that I've made these changes, now I want to open the image in Photoshop. And I want to, if not selected by default, you want to select Open as Object. Because what that'll do is that'll preserve the layer as raw, and allow you to come back to the image and make further changes in Camera Raw. So I will open this as an object. All right, so now I have it open and let's see, I will hit Control Zero to bring it up to fill the screen and now I can start making some changes. So the first thing that I wanna do uh, now that I'm in Photoshop is swap my colors. And I can do that with the channel mixer or I can use one of my actions from uh, my Photoshop actions. So I will go to Window, Actions, and here are the actions, the version two of the actions that I have available. And what I'd like to do is use the channel mixer plus the hue saturation layer. So you can download these actions from my web website and they're easy to install into Photoshop. And then you can use these as well to simplify your uh, infrared editing within Photoshop. So I'll select this one and I will hit play and that will swap the colors close this out i want to look at the hue saturation layer and maybe tweak some of these colors a bit so i'll start i'll use this hand picker up in the hue saturation and i'll pick on uh, this yellow color so it picks up the yellow channel by default you can see it's got uh, it's all seven colors here and i can pick one and what i want to do first of all is to play with the hue and see see if I want to do anything different from the default. So if I go to the right, I'm going to go into the greens, which I don't tend to use a lot of. Uh, I, don't, I don't care for the look. Uh, but from the middle to the left, we go to yellows and then sort of pinks and purples. I tend to find myself uh, off to the left here somewhere. But in this particular image, I think I'm going to go with just a yellow just a hint of yellow so not much of a change there in hue maybe a slight increase in saturation the next thing I want to do is adjust the sky so I'll click on the sky and that'll bring up the blue channel in hue saturation adjustment layer and now I can adjust the hue of the sky in this case 
you know, sometimes I kind of like a teal look in the sky, but in this case, I'm going to go for a, I think a blue yellow look. So I'll go a little bit, probably the same amount that I went for yellow roughly, uh, to blue, try to pump up the saturation there a little bit. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So now I've got my, uh, my color set. So the image is looking pretty good, but the next thing that I want to do is address some of the challenges that I have. I've got some hot spots in the image that you might be able to see. I'll zoom in and fix those. And then I've got a, a branch here that's a little bit distracting that I want to address. But the challenge is, is that I want to preserve the smart layer that I have here, the smart object that, that would allow me, if I want to make more changes, I can go back into, go back into camera raw. I can open this up um, and make additional changes in here. So um, I could say, you know, adjust, maybe I want to tweak uh, this radial filter over here and make an adjustment there, uh, change some of the values. I like being able to come back into camera raw and make these changes. But the challenge here is that if I want to uh, make changes with the spot filter, um, or the spot healing brush, then those won't work. You can see the, the not symbol, those won't work on this layer. I need a flat layer to be able to work with those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a fancy keyboard shortcut here, Control, Shift, Alt, E. And I wanna make sure I've highlighted my top layer when I do this. So Control, Shift, Alt, E. And what that will do is it will make a copy of everything below in a new layer that's flattened. So I can make changes to this layer, but if at some point I go, yeah, I don't like what I'm doing, I can, I can drop this layer and I can go back to what I was doing before. So I still have preserved what the work that I've done below. And this gives me sort of the best of both worlds. What I wanna do now is clean up some of these spots. So I'll zoom in to the image. And because uh, there's spots everywhere here, I'm gonna just work down the entire image. So we'll zoom into about 200% here. And I'll start in the upper left-hand corner. Got my spot filter that's way too big for these spots. So I'm gonna reduce the size to about maybe 10 or 15. Okay, that looks good. What I will do is then click on these individual spots. And these hot spots are created because the camera with these long exposures, in this case, a five minute exposure, the, the camera, sometimes some of the, the pixels uh, lose their minds and just uh, go crazy and turn, you know, capturing the electrical signal. Uh, goes bad and they just start capturing data endlessly uh, that kind of blows them out. So this is pretty typical with, um, with a long exposure. You'll see these hot pixels. And they're, they're a little bit different. They can be in a different location every time you take a shot like this. So it's not like necessarily a bad pixel that exists in your sensor. It's really just the nature of uh, electronics and a digital camera. So I'll work through this image and get some of these. You see a little bit of the noise that's going on here too. That's okay. Not really worried too much about that. Just want to get these hot spots. Okay. I'm at my far right edge and I'll work my way up. Okay, so I've got all of the hotspots addressed. Now I want to address that uh, branch. Zoom in over there. And I don't necessarily need to deal with this whole thing. I just wanna get the top of it, which kind of I, I find distracting. So I'll go back to the uh, spot healing brush and I need a much bigger brush size, probably something closer to 100. And now I can draw. And I like to draw in little bits if I try to do the whole thing at once, sometimes the, the brush can be challenged with that. So I like to keep what I'm, what I'm doing to smaller bits at a time to, you can see, here's a good example with the, the color changes might be kind of hard to see in the video, but uh, some of the color changes get a bit crazy. And so that's why I like to avoid um, getting, trying to cover too much at once. Okay. So I really don't need to get rid of this entire 
uh, bush down here. I just wanted to get rid of that one branch because that was the piece that was the most distracting. So now if I hit control zero and go back, then, you know, we've still got some uh, elements in the foreground here that are darkened, but they're not nearly as distracting. Okay. So that is what our, uh, what our final edit looks like in Photoshop, uh, working with a deep, uh, infrared image, a uh, very long exposure, five minutes, and then using some processing to uh, create this infrared look. Hot pixels can also be fixed by shooting dark frames. Dark frame images are taken at the same time as your image with the same settings, but with the lens cap on. This allows you to capture only the hot pixels. Dark frame subtraction is commonly used in astrophotography, but can be useful for long exposure infrared as well. If there's enough interest, I can cover dark frame subtraction in a future video. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment down below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.